There was a time many, many years ago when I wanted to get a panorama photo of the city where I live. And it was really difficult to get to a vantage point on top of the roof of a skyscraper where I could actually see the city skyline. And I made all these arrangements and planned in advance. And finally, I was in the right time at the right place with all my camera gear. And there was a beautiful sunset. And I, I remember standing there just thinking, oh, this is so awesome. I can't wait to see these photos at home. They're going to look so good because everything just looked amazing. Well, wouldn't you know it? You know how the story is going to end, don't you? Because you've had similar stories end this way as well. I got home, uploaded all the photos into Photoshop. I zoomed in at 100% and I was crushed when I saw that my photos were not sharp. And what uh, the takeaway for this, this lesson for me is that there is really one type of mistake that is a fatal flaw and that will, it's not recoverable, and that is having a photo that is not sharp. If you have a mistake with your post-processing, like your Photoshop stuff, no problem. You can redo it and you can fix it. But if you have a mistake with the sharpness of your photo, you cannot fix it usually, and it is a fatal error, and your photo won't be usable for anything except maybe a very small Instagram photo. So when we talk about tack sharp photos, there are two things that I'm going to be talking about. The first one is focus because this is 50% of the equation to getting a tack sharp photo. It's focus, having the right focus, focusing on the right area and focusing fast enough on a moving subject. We're gonna go into a lot of detail on that. And the second uh, aspect of your camera settings is, you guessed it, it's shutter speed. And we have a whole different uh, type of requirements for shutter speed when we're talking about moving subjects like wildlife versus static subjects like landscapes. So we're going to take a very deep dive into focus and shutter speed and when you get these two things right together at the same time in the same picture then you're going to have a tack sharp photo. That's the goal for all of your photos unless of course you intentionally want things to be blurry or to show movement of water with a long exposure but other than the, that scenario there, your goal is a tack sharp photo every time. And it really is what separates an amateur photo from a professional photo. If you take a close look at all professional photos, magazine cover type of photos, award winning photos, they are tack sharp. So I want you to be able to take your own tack sharp photos. This course is how you can do it.